Okay, good day to all of you. So we're already going to start our first chapter, but before that, I want to give credits uh, to the instructional materials that I'll be using. It is owned by Course Technology, and the authors are Shelley and Rosenblatt, and the book is based on systems, uh, the uh, material is uh, used is based on systems analysis and design book. So let's start with chapter one, introduction to systems analysis and design. The following are the chapter objectives. First is discuss the impact of information technology and business strategy and success. Then define an information system and describe its components. Explain how profiles and models can represent business functions and operations. Explain how the internet has affected business strategies and relationships. And then identify various types of information systems and explain who uses them. Distinguish between structured analysis, object-oriented analysis, and agile methods. Then compare the traditional waterfall model with agile methods and models. And apply five basic guidelines for systems development. Discuss the role of the information technology department and the systems analyst who work there. So let's start, of course, with an introduction. So as you can see on the pictures on the right, so we have this um, news with regards to information technology. So companies use information as a weapon in the battle to increase productivity, deliver quality products and services, maintain customer loyalty, and make sound decisions. Okay, for this first statement in the presentation, companies nowadays in this digital age and digital um, information age it is very impor Im important for companies to have the information but even though for example there is a company that owns all of the information of, in the world but do not know how to use it and utilize it properly then actually it will be rendered useless so how these companies identify to use uh, information um, when, were. That's the very important. When are you going to use the information and how are you going to use the information? Actually, uh, this is uh, an emerging trend or already an emerging field nowadays. We have the so-called data analytics. So, data analytics is very important for all companies because um, data analytics, uh, they provide insights into which uh, companies, uh, what what these companies uh, will use information in that particular place, in a particular time, in a particular market. So, um, in relation to data analytics, um, I don't know if all of you uh, knew this. Um, I hope that you will take um, certification courses related to data analytics because that is the very good um, um, field. Um, Almost all of the companies are employing data analysts in order for them to win the battle with regards to their uh, operations. So actually, there is one. We, we have this Project Sparta um, uh, by the uh, DOST and um, Development Academy of the Philippines, and it is free. So with regards to certification, I know you already finished your data analytics course but i do hope that um you take the opportunity of taking certifications i'm not saying you have to um, spend money but there are also certifications that are free such as uh, the projects sparta um since you're already a thir third year it's very important that as early as today as early as now you start to have certification so that when you graduate and apply for a job you already have certification and you already have an advantage or um, an edge compared to your um, competitors in the job in the job so i hope that uh don't just think of the present but think of your future start investing now by, by means of investing now it's not you again you're not going to spend money there are many um, certifications available and there are free certifications. So I hope that you would grab the opportunity, specifically for data analytics. Hi, right, next. 
information technology can mean the difference between success and failure. Actually, information technology, its infrastructure, the IT infrastructure is very expensive. Companies invest a lot uh, companies invest a lot of money for them to have the IT infrastructure in their company. So because it's very expensive, if you cannot utilize it properly or maximize its capacity and and all of its features, then actually it will be a failure especially on the financial side of the company. But if you um, maximize it um, and use it properly, and then uh, actually having an IT infrastructure is an advantage for a company, then it will be a successful um, for the company. Uh, uh, it's worth it that companies invest IT infrastructure even though um, it is very costly. Uh, next is the impact of IT. So what is IT? Short again for information technology. It is a combination of hardware and software products and services that companies use to manage, access, communicate, and share information. So with regards to information technology, so we have the future. So three issues that will shape the future. First is changes in, in world or in the world. Actually, it's very evident now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it only not affected the Philippines, but actually worldwide. So that's already a very good proof that changes in the world, um, sometimes it's not just with one country, but it happens globally. And then also changes in technology. Oh, why? Example, since of the pan uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are doing this um, asynchronous uh, teaching and learning or the synchronous teaching and learning. So that's why what we are uh, using is we're, we're having or we're acquiring platforms that could support the, the conduct of a non-face-to-face uh, non uh, non interaction with students. So that's why uh, the uh, companies with video conferencing apps, of course, they are refining their software so that it can meet the demands and the standards that a university or an academic institution is looking for. And then also changes in client demand. Um, nowadays, because of um, nowadays, up, it, it's already proliferate of having um, online classes or the non-face-to-face non -face transaction, webinars. So that's why um, the client demand with regards to um, internet connectivity is higher. So, so now, because of that, um, of course, our uh, internet service provider must ensure that uh, we are, uh, we are uh, getting the worth of our money with their services. Uh, because uh, I really don't know uh, currently, but again, in the ASEAN region, Philippines has one of the most expensive internet connections. So I hope that this will change specifically nowadays that most of the transactions are held online. So next is we have the systems development. So business information systems are developed by people who are technically qualified, business oriented and highly motivated. Of course, if we said uh, if we have this business information systems, it helps the business uh, processes to be executed um, in a very good way. So those who will develop this business information system, they should be highly uh, technically qualified or highly qualified. And then why highly qualified? Because business uh, information system is very important in a company specifically if it is the heart of the operations of the company and then it is uh the people are also business oriented of course uh they're building that information system to solve a particular problem in that business process and of course they're also highly motivated of course in the job it's very important that your employees are highly motivated at work so that they could produce uh, best results specifically in um, developing information systems. And then, these people must be good communicators with strong analytical and critical thinking skills. 
Um, specifically, these persons are called systems analysts. So it's very important. There are uh, there are good communicators in either written or oral, and at the same time, we have analytical, strong. The adjective is strong, analytical and critical thinking skills. Okay, for us, uh, for you students, so we have to develop at least these two things. You should be a good communicator in either written or oral. And at least you have this skill set of analytical and critical thinking. So it's very important in this course. Okay, next is we have the systems analysis and design, or we call it SAD. But I hope you're not sad emotionally, but be happy. So SAD is step-by-step -step process for developing high-quality information systems. And one of the actors in the systems analysis and design is the systems analyst. So the systems analyst plan, develop, and maintain information systems. So because of his or her role in the systems analysis and design, it is very important that he or she possesses the good communication skills with strong analytical and technical uh, critical thinking skills. Okay, next is how this information systems uh, develop. So first is we have the in-house packages or in-house applications. So in-house application, it is done if there is an IT department in a company. And then this IT department is the one who de uh, developed information system needed by that company. So that's an in-house. Another good example, so it's clearer, is our university. Our university has their own IT department. It is called ICT Services Office. And the ones that we are using, such as the online enrollment, um, your grades, the portal, actually these are all in-house applications. It is done by the ICT Services Office. Okay, next is we have the software packages uh, software packages um, this is possible for companies that do not have an IT department for example you have a furniture industry and um, you want to have an inventory system for your um, for your company is it correct that you're going to call one of your uh, for example carpenters and then let him sit in front of the computer and, hey, do the in inventory system of, uh, of the furniture company. So it's not correct. Uh, and in the end, and he will not do it. Or maybe, uh, actually, maybe, actually, he will never really do it because he do not know how to uh, create the information system. So a uh, first option, if uh, your company does not have an IT department, is you should acquire or procure software packages specifically for example in our furniture um, company we have the for inventory system and then next is we have internet-based application services so software packages um, they can be standalone they can they can operate without an internet connection well the internet-based application services um, these are services offered online by companies uh, of course, it requires an internet connection. What uh, You're not buying the software here, but you are paying for the services. And then we also have the outsourcing. So outsourcing is, again, we have a uh, furniture company. And then um, another option, aside from the software packages, is you can do the outsourcing. Outsourcing is employing a third-party company and then um, let them create the information system that is needed by your company. So outsourcing, we have inshore and offshore. Inshore, uh, for example, here in the Philippines, if it is inshore, the company is only located in the country, while the offshore, the company is located in other parts of the world. So that's the difference between the inshore and offshore outsourcing.
And then we also have custom solutions. Custom solutions, um, there are also software packages and internet-based application services. The only uh, difference is that if we say it is custom, meaning um, you can buy the software package, but then you uh, there is a feature that you can modify the features of your information system based on the needs of your company or which uh, which information system does your company need and then we also have the enterprise-wide software strategies so these are software that is integrated in all in one specifically for large companies for example um, there is for sales for financial for accounting for the executive for the decision support for the transaction processing systems they are all connected so that is the enterprise-wide software strategies. So nowadays for developing information system, is, uh, it is a matter of how, then, what nowadays. Okay, next is we have this information system components. So let us define system. It is a set of related components that produces specific results. And the next is a mission critical system is one that is vital to a company's operations. A mission critical. The, uh, it's, uh, the key word here is vital to a company's operations. Okay, let's have an example. An example of a mission critical system is the transaction processing system. For example, in a supermarket, if they don't have the transaction processing system, how can they um uh, how can they um efficiently uh do the transaction processing if they don't have such system so actually it's uh, uh this is an example of a mission critical system and then data consists of basic facts that are the system's raw material so data at actually data and information data is not yet refined and then information is already a refined data and then information is data that has been transformed into output that is valuable to users uh, for example we have number nine actually number nine is data because you don't know what is number nine is that a date is that age is that any number that represents something if it does not have anything just the figure for example number nine it is only data, but if you presented nine years old, so it is understood that the number nine there, it is already an information because it's pertaining to the age. And then information systems have five key components. We have the hardware, software, data processes, and people. So let's delve into this five inform uh these five uh, components of the information system. First is the hardware. It is the physical layer of the information system. Uh, in, in your, I don't know, in high school, hardware is any tangible parts of the computer. Okay? And then we have the so-called Moore's Law. So what is Moore's Law? If you're familiar or not familiar with Moore's Law, so Moore's Law is... Um, the components of a hardware is uh, dub, uh, doubles every 18 months or 1.5 years. This is very evident in our storage devices. Okay, for example, you have 256 gig. And then after 1.5 uh, or 1.5 years or 18 months, it will double its capacity. And also the processors. Uh, it's also evident in processors. It doubles every 18 months. It's transistors. So that's the Moore's law. And the next component is we have the software. So we have the system software. So the system software is composed of the operating systems, uh, utility software. And then we also have the application software. This is composed, of course, of the um, specific purpose applications such as for example powerpoint presentation um example in your phones the games actually that is already an application software 
And then we also have this enterprise applications. As I have said with the soft, uh, enterprise uh, software, these are um, an integrated array of software that is used by the companies in different um, operations or different offices. Okay, we have this some classifications of software. Okay, we have this so-called horizontal system. Uh, the term horizontal system means you, uh, it is an information system that is common to most of the companies. Uh, example, um, if your company um, has products to be, um, to be counted, to be, inve uh, to be uh, put in inventory, so you need an inventory system. So actually, an inventory system is an example of an, a horizontal system because it can all, for example, it can be applied to a university, inventory of books, inventory of laboratory equipment, inventory of other resources, and then it can also be used, for example, in other companies that needs inventory management. So that's at the horizontal system. What is the vertical system? Vertical system, these are, uh, are information systems that can only be applied to a specific operations. Uh, and it, it is not applicable to all. Uh, a very good example of it is the airline uh, reservation system. Why is it a vertical system? Because it only applies for uh, for 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 airline of uh, uh, those who have an airport, uh, an airline system. But do you think an airline reservation system be applicable for a um, for a university? So no, definitely not, because the university doesn't have, of course, an airline or an airport. So that's an example of a vertical system. Again, a vertical system you cannot. Uh, apply it to all companies. It is only for a specific operation. And then we also have the so-called legacy systems. These are information systems by the term legacy, meaning old. Okay, so um, these are information systems that are still existing because if they will transfer to a newer information system, it can uh, jeopardize the data integrity uh, that uh, that a company is holding uh, is holding. Example of a legacy system, for example, in banks, there are still banks that are still using old systems. Uh, they cannot uh, they cannot sacrifice because it's no they cannot sacrifice the data because uh, for example in banks their data is very important. So that's why they're still sticking to the legacy systems. Uh, maybe their um, up, uh, their um, interface is already new, but then again, the uh, the core of their um, information system, they're still using the legacy systems. And then next is we have the data. So ta uh, tables store data. So later on, why why is it uh, data are stored in? tables because it is also used in databases they are actually uh, stored in tables and link tables work together to supply data in data design you will see uh, why these tables are linked so that's why uh, because of this link tables database is very powerful okay next is we have the processes Describe the tasks and business functions that users, managers, and IT staff members perform to achieve specific results. Of course, these are your business processes. So, for example, what are the step-by-step -step procedure in order for, um, for you to transact? For example, in the sharing office, in the registrar's office, uh, the way we are teaching, that is already our processes. And then we have the people. So people, we have the stakeholders. Uh, actually, they're not the owners, but they have an effect to the uh, information system. And then we also have the users or end users. Examples of people in the IS components. Okay, next is we have understanding the business. 
So we have this business process modeling. Um, we have this term modeling, meaning you're going to use diagrams in order for you to explain the business process because sometimes it is difficult to visualize a bis uh, process if it is not in a diagram and if it's only written in a step-by-step -step procedure for you to identify where are the loopholes of that process. And then it is also very important to identify the business profile. And then we have the business models. So for business models, you have to include, for example, the business models, the diagrams, and then the, you should also know what are the business processes. And then we also have the business process reengineering or BPR. What, uh, what is this? Uh, business process reengineering, for example, you, you identified a certain problem in that business process. And then after identifying that problem, you have to think of a solution of how to solve that particular problem in that business process. Okay, we have the new kinds of companies. We have this production-oriented. So production-oriented, of course, these are the production companies, the semiconductor companies. And then we also have the service-oriented. So service-oriented, one of the examples of service-oriented, of course, is teaching. We are offering our services by means of imparting knowledge to students. So that is already a service-oriented. And then next, we also have the internet-dependent. These are companies that exist only, only in um, um, their operations are, are run or it's only working if they have internet connections. Example of this are the application services that are, that are offered by uh, some of the um, software companies. And then we have the dot-com. These are companies. Uh, companies that operates online and then brick and mortar brick and mortar is a term used for physical stores oh, example sm malls it is a brick and mortar because there is a physical store is lazada uh, can be classified to as a brick and mortar company no because they do have the warehouse but they do not have this um uh, unlike sm that there is already actually a physical store lazada actually is a dot com and it operates online okay so that's the difference with the dot com and brick and mortar okay next is impact of the internet uh, the impact of the internet specifically in business transaction uh, from customer to customer um, it becomes too um, um, too broad or they have many channels now for the uh, transacting business. So we, uh, we have this e-commerce or the i-commerce, internet commerce. And we have the B2C, the business to consumer. So meaning a consumer will, transact, uh, will have a transaction with the business. And then we have the B2B or business to business. So, business-to-business -business uses electronic data interchange. And then, they have the software that uses extensible markup language. Examples of B2B is supply chain management. For example, this, uh, for example uh, a supermarket um, has already low stocks. So, they would talk to a supplier. So, uh, actually, a supplier is also a business entity. So, that's why it's a B2B, business to business. And B2B also exists in supplier relationship management or the SRM. Okay, for supply chain management is SEM. Okay, next is we have the business information systems. In the past, IT managers divided systems into categories based on the user group the system served. We have the office systems. So the office system is, um, these are the productivity tools that are used. And then we have the operational systems. Actually, this is very important. So operational systems mostly are, all of, uh, all of them are mission critical systems. And then we have the decision support systems. 
if there are any problem that arise and it needs a decision, you could consult the DSS. And then we also have an executive information system. It is a dashboard for executive for managers to see the whole operations of the company if it is doing well or they can easily identify the problems uh, by means of a uh, executive information system has a dashboard okay today identify a system by its function feature and features rather than by its users so we have the enterprise computing systems again by means of enterprise this is an integrated software solution um, needed by a company and it encompasses all the operations of the company and then we have the transaction processing system example of tps is example in a supermarket what the one with the barcode so that's already a tps and then we also have the business support systems more of business support system is technical support and then knowledge management systems, this includes the documentation, the procedures on how to do uh, something, and some of the um, information with regards to the company. And we have also the user productivity systems. So these are tools that are used to, uh, for example, for people to collaborate, people to work, uh, these are office productivity uh, office productivity tools fall in this user productivity systems okay first is we have the enterprise computing system it support company-wide operations and data management requirements and then it has the enterprise resource planning and many hardware and software vendors target the enterprise computing market why? Why this hardware and software vendors? Because enterprise computing systems, because it is already integrated, a one-stop solution for the company in all of its operations, it is very expensive. And But uh, if you're going to use it, uh, you're going to invest in that, and then and it will be uh, utilized ex uh, uh, in, 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 very, in very good fashion. So, there will never be a problem for the enterprise. Okay, next is we have the transaction processing systems. Involve large amounts of data and are mission critical system, as I've said earlier. It is efficient because they process a set of transaction related commands as a group rather than individually. So we have this example of a sales transaction. So what are this? Uh, what are some of the sales transaction process that can happen? Verify customer data, check credit status, post to accounts receivable, check in stock status, adjust inventory data, and update sales activity file. And this uh, transaction-related commands are included already in the sales transaction processing systems. You don't need a separate um, information system or a separate software for verifying customer data and all other processes for uh, related to sales transaction. Okay, next is we have the business support system. Provide job-related information to users at all levels in the of a company. So, it also included here is we have the technical support and we have the management information systems. It also includes the radio frequency identifications or the RFID. And then this business support systems answers the what if questions. Okay, next is we have the knowledge management systems. These are also called the expert systems. And why they are called expert systems? It's because they simulate human reasoning by combining a knowledge base and inference rules so many knowledge and management systems use a technique called fuzzy logic so fuzzy logic i mean logic specifically in digital logic for example we have zero one so zero is associated with off and one is associated with on for fuzzy logic example we have an adjective for hot and cold Example, associate code with zero and associate hot with one. 
um, in fuzzy logic, we have a value for lukewarm. So that's actually lukewarm is not very hot and not very, uh, it's not very hot. So that's why it's called lukewarm. So that's the, the idea there with fuzzy logic. It's not specifically one or zero, but they also have values for, uh, for, for example, for lukewarm that, uh, that, rec that can represent the, the lukewarm um, status. Okay, next, we have user productivity system. So technology that improves productivity. So these are groupware. So Google Docs, is a very good example of a groupware because you can use it, you can edit uh, any document simultaneously. So for example, in your research course, example, if you're, uh, if you're in a facilitator or your professor is requiring you to submit and you can do it at the same time, assign groups and you can simultaneously edit the document. And then next is we have the Information systems integration. Most large companies require systems that combine transaction processing, business support, knowledge management, and user productivity features. So most of these systems that want this information systems integration, it is already found in the enterprise software solutions. Next is what information do users need? Okay, so we have this hierarchy. Okay, at the lowest bottom, we have the operational em employees. Then next is the, are the supervisors and team leaders. Then middle managers or knowledge workers and top managers. Okay, as you could see, operational employees in a pyramid or in a cone shape, they have... The largest, uh, largest space because, of course, operational employees are the largest set of employees in an organization. While, of course, or of course, top managers, of course, they're at least in number. Can you? I is there a company existing that there are many managers and few operational employees? That's impossible because operational employees are the ones working. Physically, okay, don't say that top managers are not working. Uh, operational employees are tired physically while top managers are tired mentally. And it also affects them physically. And then we have this um, illustration, the division for the business function. So these are the common or the most common business functions. We have the sales, accounting, human resources, marketing, production, and information technology. So for example, this operational employee, this one is for information technology and then this uh, division is for the sales. So that's the um, organizational levels and then based on the business functions. Of course, for the information, for example, for marketing, they only, uh, what, what are the information that they need? They, do they need the information from the accounting? No, because uh, accounting is more of the financial, uh, financial side or financial um, information. So marketing will only focus on how to, how to motivate the client, how to pursue the client of um, having the services or products of their company. And then for sales, of course, they're only concerned with the sales. They don't care about the human resources. So that's what, uh, what, what we mean that um, in a certain business functions, strictly a, a, a particular office only accesses the data or the information that is relevant or that is related to their work. They don't care about the other information that these offices, offices have. Uh, have okay next is we have the systems development tools so that's why as i've said to clearly uh, visualize the business processes uh they are doing models they're doing diagrams they're doing graphs so we have this modeling 
So we have many types of modeling. We have the business model, the requirements model, the data model, the object model, network model, and process model. Actually, we're going to tackle study specific models, the requirements, the data, the object, and process in the later parts of our course. Okay, next is we have this term prototyping. So prototyping, the product of prototyping, of course, is a prototype. It speeds up the development process significantly. So the, the focus of prototyping is functionality. It doesn't care with aesthetics, but as long as it is, it, it is functional, you can consider it as a prototype. And then important decisions might be made too early before business or IT issues are thoroughly understood. It can be an extremely valuable tool for uh, prototyping because you're concerned with functions. Uh, and then every time, uh, the, for example, you have a monthly meeting in which every month you're going to show the improvements of the prototype. Um, if you're having this prototyping as a development tool, it's easier for you to change because it's still a prototype. If ever there are feedbacks, if there are suggestions and comments, you can easily change. But if you already presented this on an end product, and then the users or the stakeholders have suggestions with regards to the prototype, it uh, actually it's not a prototype anymore. It will be hard for you to, to change it or to modify based on the comments, feedbacks, and suggestions of the stakeholders or the end users. So that's why prototyping, as I've said, can be an extremely valuable tool. Okay, next is we have the computer-aided systems engineering or case tools, also called computer-aided software engineering. And, that, and then these are called case tools can generate program code which speeds the implementation process. Aside from they can make diagrams, they can also generate program codes. And if, for example, if you are inclined to programming. Okay, next is we have the structured analysis. Is we have the systems development life cycle or SDLC. Okay, it's predictive approach because systems development life cycle has phases in which you can follow, you, can, you, you will know what, what will happen next. And then uses a set of process models to describe a system graphically. So this one that you're seeing is a data flow diagram. So we will be studying how to create these diagrams. And then it is a process-centered technique. And then a very good example for the structured analysis is the waterfall model. Okay, waterfall model actually, um, it is not used by uh, by oh, by most of the companies because there is advantage for using waterfall model because you cannot return to the previous phase unlike uh, with other um, systems development methods they could use uh, they can return to previous phases example if there are feedbacks from the stakeholders or the end users okay for structured analysis we have this deliverable or end product so the disadvantage in the built-in structure of the LDC because the waterfall model does not emphasize interactivity among the phases. That's what I've been telling that if you, uh, if you are in the next phase and then there is a feedback or there is a uh, feedback or suggestion or comments, you cannot return to the previous phase. And then this criticism can be valid, but you can still follow the waterfall model if the SDLC phases are followed to rigidly and then adjacent phases usually interact so the sdlc model usually includes five steps we have the systems planning systems analysis systems design systems implementation and system support and security let's delve to these um, uh, steps of the sdlc First is the systems planning. So the systems planning phase. <coughs> Excuse. So systems planning starts with a systems request. So begins the process and describes problems 
or desired changes. So, systems planning starts always with a systems request. It's either, <coughs> excuse, a certain, a certain user um, notice a problem and then reported it to the systems analyst. Or specifically, an IT department discovers a problem that affects the business processes smooth execution. So, we will have this systems request. And then the purpose of this phase is to perform a preliminary investigation. Why do you need to have preliminary investigation? Is this problems that, that is noticed or observed or seen by, for example, a systems analyst, are they really feasible or are they really worth doing, for example, of developing an information system? So you need to have a preliminary investigation. So, key part of preliminary investigation is a feasibility study. Of course, if you're going to have a systems request, it, it can incur cost. So, that's why you have to make sure if these problems or if these problems are solved, will it dramatically improve the performance and the efficiency of the business process. So, part of it is the feasibility study. Okay, next is we have the systems analysis. The deliverable is the system requirements documents. For systems analysis, you already identified the problem as a uh, feasible, that, uh, feasible uh, and based on the feasibility study, it should be solved right away. So you need to delve further. You have to study the processes. You have to model it using diagrams. Uh, model it in the old business process and model it to the suggested solution. And then if you, did, uh, if you do that, we have the deliverable, the system requirements document. Next is we have the uh, systems design. So deliverable is system design specification. So management and user involvement is critical. So for systems design, why is it important that management and user involvement and not just the IT department in the systems analyst is involved? It is because, of course, the managers, they are the stakeholders. They want that this, uh, uh, specifically if an information system, it will cost the company a lot of money. Managers must, must make sure that these information systems are really worth it. And then, of course, why user involvement is critical? Because they're the ones who's go, who, will, who will use the software. If they're not comfortable of using that software, even if it's very, very, very highly programmed by the most uh, intelligent or the best programmer around the world, but if the user uh, is not comfortable of using it, then... Again, it will be useless and it will only affect the performance of the user of you, uh, by, uh, from using the information system. Next is systems implementation. New system is constructed. And then it will be tested if it is, po if it is compatible with the um, hardware of the company and the IT infrastructure. And then next is we have the system support and security. A well-designed system must be secure, of course. It must not be um, easily hacked or the data is easily be accessed by outside uh, 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 by outsiders. And it must also be reliable, maintainable, and scalable. Scalable meaning you can add features to the information system without affecting its performance without affecting its functions uh, holistically. And then most IS need to be updated significantly or replaced after several years of operation. So that is why it is called systems development life cycle. Um, if already the information system is not anymore um, doing its job of performing because of cli uh, change in client demands, changes in technology. Again, it will, re uh, it will uh, start again with the systems request and the cycle repeats on the uh, systems development life cycle. 
Okay, next is aside from structured analysis is we have the object-oriented analysis. It combines data and processes that act on data into things called objects. So object is a member of a class. And then objects possess properties. And then methods change an object's properties. So we have this. Okay, so instructor and student is member of a of person. Okay, so uh, instructor inherits the properties of person and also the student. Name, address, social security number. So that they are called inherited properties. And then they have their unique properties. For example, for the instructor, the office location, office telephone, and date hired. While the student has their own unique Properties, major GPA advisor. Um, we can get through on data design or rather uh, object-oriented design for this uh, types of diagrams. Okay, next is for the object-oriented analysis, a message requests specific behavior or information from another object. There is a message for object-oriented analysis. And then this will be elaborated on, uh, there's a dedicated chapter for the object-oriented analysis. And then usually follow a series of analysis and design phases that are similar to the SDLC. And it is an interactive model. Um, there is a question, uh, for example, if you use a programming language, Actually, using a programming language can determine if you're if you're going to use a structured or if you're going to use object oriented. If you if your programming language is object oriented, definitely you go you should use the object oriented analysis, not the structured analysis. Okay, next is another type of systems development methods is the agile methods. These are the newest development. It emphasizes continuous feedback. It is iterative by nature, repetitive in nature, iterative development. So Agile Community has published the Agile Manifesto and it is a spiral model. Um, another example of Agile methods is the Scrum, XP programming, pair programming. Agile means uh, Agile is in Tagalog, it's maliksi. So that's the term for Agile. So you're going, you are creating a systems development. Uh, for example, in uh, an example of agile methods is developing a website, web web information system. Why is it uh, categorized as agile methods? Because as you can see, um, web development is iterative in nature, and then you can already see what uh, what is uh, what your website looks like and then you're just going to add to improve the uh, website that you are doing and then agile process determines the end result so other variations and related methods exist as i've said these are the scrum and extreme programming or the xp actually there are many other agile methods available you can research that in the internet so, analysts should understand the pros and cons of any approach before selecting a development method. So, that's also the work of the systems analyst. He or she must identify and understand the nature of the systems development that they're going to do based on uh, what, what, what type of systems development method they're going to use. So, that I've said, if you are using an object-oriented programming language, definitely... Uh, the systems development method that you're going to use is object-oriented analysis. If you're going to make a website, of course, you are going to select from one of the agile methods. And then there are other development methods such as joint application development. We also have the rapid application development. And then... Uh, might encounter other systems development techniques because, of course, um, technology is very fast-pacing. There are other uh, system development techniques that are uh, that are um, incorporated are are included. And then we also have the Rational Unified Process or the RUP and the Microsoft Solutions 
framework. These are other development uh, methods used. So, uh, MSF is used, of course, by Microsoft. Okay, systems development guidelines. Okay, if you're going to develop, you would always have a plan. So, develop a project plan. Next is involve users and listen carefully to them. Because as I've said, users are the ones who's going to use the system. You must design specifically their user interface based on the pre preferences of the user, not on the preferences of the programmer or the systems analyst. Next is use project management tools to identify tasks and milestones or management tools such as gun charts work breakdown structure per cpm and then next is develop accurate cost and benefit information how much and who will benefit the uh, who will benefit uh, if the information system is finished and of course remain flexible it is very important because of course there are risks there are uh, there are times that you're going to adjust the schedule or you're going to adjust the resources so for systems development we are all we should always be flexible okay next is we have a um, illustration of an information technology department so for an IT department we have the director and then this are the uh, common uh, job dis uh, job descriptions or people inside a typical inform IT department. We have the application development, system support and security, user support, database administration, network administration, web support, and quality assurance. Okay. Next is we have the systems analyst. Actually, systems analyst is not included. Let's go back. Actually, this he or she is not included in the IT department. So, responsibilities. They translate business requirements into IT projects. Actually, the uh, systems analysts are bridge in the business side, in the technical side. So, what are the knowledge, skills, and education? Needs technical knowledge. That's what I've been saying. Systems analysts must have the technical know-how of things. And then, they have strong oral and written communication skills. So, that oral and written communication skills. So, since we are, uh, the subject is systems analysis and design, um, one of my objectives is, I do, you do already have the technical knowledge, but uh, this one, oral and written communication skills is part of the 21st century skills. You have to develop that because it's very important nowadays. They're not just looking for person who's very good in technology or in a technical, uh, you have a technical ability, but they're also looking for uh, persons with soft skills. And then they have the analytic ability. An understanding of business operations, so that's why, aside from the technical know-how, they must understand. They're very good at analyzing the business operations, and of course, they have the critical thinking skills. So that's why it's very important nowadays that, again, you're not just very good at your field, but you are developed holistically. You're very good in oral. You're very good in written communication skills and then certification we have important credentials about this is what i've been um pointing out since the beginning of this chapter that nowadays certifications are very important these are uh evidences and proof that you already have that skill uh, gone are the days that you are uh word by mouth that you are the best you are referred as the best uh, in your field. No, the company are looking for evidence, and one of them uh, of them is the certification for a particular skill. So I've again, since um, also as your class advisor, 
I hope that grab certifications that are available online that are free. Uh, instead of, I'm not saying that um, do not waste your time in playing games. As I've said, as I've said, um, I think it's the third time. I don't know if I said it when you're first year and when you're in last sem. But then again, the game is just there. Uh, actually, I, I myself, I am also am a gamer. I've been, I am playing this game for two years non-stop. There are only days that I cannot play specifically. For example, I went to a place that there is no internet connection. So, I, I don't have... I'm not going to spend data for that game. I'm just uh, always for the free resources. Um, for playing games, it's not bad. For Of course, um, all work and no play makes a person dull. So, you need to have, for example, um, a recreation for you to be... Um, to, to relax. There's no problem with that. But then, you must allot time for it. If, For example, if it's fi time for work, of course, you should work. Not if you're going to play games all day and then all of the time is already spent on gaming. Um, the game is always there, but the opportunity, the time for you to acquire the certifications, that's, that's what I've been saying. So that if you already on the applying for a job it will be easier for you because you already have a certification and i hope you're you're going to take the certifications not just because for the additional grade point that you'll receive but then think of it as for your investment in uh, for your future okay what are the career uh, opportunities so for systems analysts it's also very important so, the job titles actually is the systems analyst and company organization. Most uh, companies with IT and most of the included in the Forbes list of, of top, top 500 companies, they also have, uh, they need the systems analyst. And then the company size, of course, it depends upon the size of how many uh, systems analysts are needed. And then corporate cor culture. Uh, actually, all of the companies have this so-called corporate culture. And of course, as employees, you need to uh, you need to abide by that. You need to follow that so-called corporate culture. And then, of course, the salary, location, and future growth. So, of course, that's are the career opportunities for that is also included in the systems analyst. Okay, so we're already at the end for the chapter summary. It refers to the combination of hardware and software resources that companies use to manage, access, communicate, and share information. The essential components of an information system are hardware, software, data, processes, and people. Successful companies offer a mix of products, technical and financial services, consulting, and customer support. And then IS are identified as enterprise computing systems, transaction processing systems, business support systems, knowledge management systems, or user productivity systems. And then organization structure includes top managers, middle managers, and knowledge workers, supervisors, and team leaders. The IT department develops, maintains, and operates a company's information systems. Systems analyst needs a combination of technical and business knowledge, analytical ability, and communication skills. And then systems analysts need to consider salary, location, and future growth potential when making a career decision. So, we're already done with Chapter 1. And then if you do have any questions, so we're, I'm going to provide a discussion forum so that you feel free if you do have any questions and clarifications with regards to Chapter 1. Then again, good day.